This episode is sponsored by FightFitLifestyle.com. Go to FightFitLifestyle.com to get awesome merchandise, gear, and even CBD products as well. Jason, thank you for taking your time. How are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing doing very good. Uh, you know, training camp's going really well. Just getting to the end of that grind. You know, just uh, just wait until the 31st. You know what I'm saying? Just ring the bell already. <laughs> well, let's talk about your fight. You're a week out. Uh, Halloween night, October 31st. You you make your return to the octagon. Um, just kind of talk about you know mentally. You're you're just going in, setting up. I know your first fight with the UFC was very short notice, but now you've had some time. You're making that se- second walk. What's just going through your mind right now? Yeah, uh, what's going through my mind is just is win. You know what? Mm-hmm. I've had time to prepare for this fight, and we've set up a schedule that you know I really sat down and prepared myself for for the 31st and just making that walk all i want to do is win that's it well now that you're making the second one you you experienced that ufc debut that walk which is you know during these times it's a lot different than normal ufc walks because there's no fans um talk about that experience but now this second time around i mean your the kind of just thoughts about making this second return obviously you're talking about uh winning and right there yeah, the first time, you know, a lot of people ask me is, you know, did it, did not having fans kind of like mess you up a little bit? And I'm not really, you know, I mean, it was my it was my UFC debut. Uh, I remember walking out and looking up at the uh, the big screen and smiling because I saw myself in a you know UFC uniform walking out, just thinking like, okay, this is this is where we're at. Win, lose, draw. You know, I've made it. This is this is what we're doing. Um, second time, you know, I think it's going to be. I'm just going to be dialed in. I, I, I picture myself, you know, I do a lot of visualization of like walking out and what the cage feels like and yada, yada, yada. But I can see myself just being dialed in, like just focused on this fight and just, like I said, being prepared to win, you know, no matter what. Well, you're taking on Cole Williams, uh, who has a really good pressure style, obviously comes from that collegiate wrestling background. Uh, what intrigues you the most about his style? You know, every, every opponent is a different puzzle. Uh, what part of this puzzle piece are you excited to, to solve? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, he's a pressure fighter, good collegiate wrestler, but I, I don't think he understands. I don't think, you know, people understand, like, how good of wrestling that I have mm-hmm. and how good I actually am and how strong I am until you actually get in that cage and I get a hold of you. I think it's, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game when you're in there with me. And I, I definitely think I'm going to move around and piece him up, and I think I'm going to take him down and uh, put him in his cage and just kind of work him in his cage, grind him a little bit, and I think I'm going to – cook him up on that cage until you know until he wants to quit do you think you're gonna tire and kind of exhaust him too with your takedowns i know you also have heavy leg kicks as well do you do you see that being also a a big factor and he also hasn't and he hasn't fought since last august i know that was his last fight do you also feel your activity because you've fought already twice this year may play a beneficial uh, factor for you yeah you mentioned leg kicks man i kick hard and i promise you Stands, those calf kicks are coming. Calf kicks are, are part of the game, and I promise. You. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think my – I've always been a pretty active fighter. You know, there's times I fought three or four times in, like, five months, something like that. I've always been pretty active. I think that will definitely play in the game. Uh, we were supposed to be scheduled to fight uh, September 12th, mm-hmm. and he declined. I don't know if he was hurt or mm-hmm. COVID or what it was. You know, I know what I was doing in that time, and I was in the gym, and I was busting my ass, uh, regardless if I had a fight or not. We were, we were all in the gym getting better, and that's why you see a lot of the glory guys right now, Kevin Kroon, uh, James Krause, yeah. stepping up on us because we stayed in the gym, we stayed ready, regardless of the circumstances. And that, I think that put us ahead of a lot of people in this game right now. And I think that'll show, uh, when it comes October 31st, it'll show that we were in the gym the whole time, and he's just now, I'm going to call it coming off the couch or whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, and the thing about activity, it's, it, you know, we say that, of course, look at Brian Ortega this weekend, two years gone, and, and but look, look like he had missed a beat, but, you know, having activity obviously helps you, helps you a lot, and uh, just going back to your, your striking and getting those leg kicks, I mean, those are so, those play such an equalizer in, in most fights, and I, I think that's something that, and we'll get into a little bit about maybe Justin Gaethje this coming weekend with Aviv, because he has dangerous leg kicks, 
Um, when you're in the gym and you're, you're, you're practicing those, what different angles are you working on? Just kind of breaking down that technique. How do you like it to throw it? And are you that guy that a lot of sparring partners are kind of, like, Oh man, I'm going to get those kicks. Cause we all know that one person in the gym that has those kicks that are just no matter what angles he's going to, they're going to get you. Yeah. Uh, the problem with us is that's everybody in the gym. It's yeah. not one person. It's uh, it's, you're going with everybody and you know whether 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 they're jeff molina who's on 25 mm. who lands perfectly every or or mm. uh you know technique is a lot we're into a lot of like just feigning and a lot of just it's more trickery than you know just straight up muay thai kicks that people see coming a mile away so i'll uh i'll let that one be a kind of a surprise of what angles are coming from what yeah but know that the, the way we're setting things up and the way we're working a lot of things are coming together do you uh do you think he's going to try to you know shoot in a little bit early try to get this fight controlled in the first round or you think he's going to have a little more patience possibly uh i think he's he's a very low volume striker mm-hmm. uh, he really doesn't throw a lot of volume in the f- first two rounds or whatever um so i don't know he kind of he kind of just plays out kind of jumps in, jumps out, has a lot of counter striking. Uh, when I watched him versus Claudio Silva, he didn't mm-hmm. obviously have a lot to get, uh, get footage on, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I think he'll, I think he'll want to put me in the cage. I think he'll want to, you know, try to try to wear my power down too. But at the same time, uh, I'm going to use full work and just move in and out. Do you like to make predictions for fights? I, I do. Um, you know, I, I honestly feel like I'll TKO him in the second round. I mm-hmm. think I'll, I'll, I'll beat him on the ground from ground strikes. Mm-hmm. And that might seem different to us, but I know what, what I'm bringing. I know what I want to do. And I think that's where the fight went. I think I'll TKO him on the ground. Well, you mentioned Claudio Silva. Congrats again to, to James Krauss on that win this past week. And great fight, great performance, and especially, you know, him injuring his knee. I mean, do you have any updates that you're allowed to talk about? Or how, how's James doing right now? Uh, he's on his way back. I haven't got mm-hmm. the chance to say, hey, you know, everything okay. I just know, you know, I think he tore something. I don't know exactly the whole details. So I know he's on his way back. He'll probably be in tomorrow. And I think he already texted me, like, hey, let's get in work this week. And I'm like, bro, you just, you just fought. <laughs> you just fought. <laughs> you your knee and you're like, let's – he's like, I'll get you a training partner. We'll get this going. I'm like, so he's already back. And that, that dude doesn't quit ever. He, he- always, always – he definitely gradually mentioned it in the corner. Well, I, I think my knee's torn. And then went, went back out there. So definitely seen all around toughness right there. Yeah, he's, he's a gangster, man. Well, just talk about, you know, with Glory right now, just the morale of the team. I mean, you know, James just went in. Megan's got a fight in December for the world title. Um, you know, you have your fight next week. What's that morale like right now in the gym? Man, the morale has never been higher. It's, it's a, a gym full of monsters. Like, mm-hmm. you've looked – you know, four years ago, we had four people in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Look at it now. We have 13 people in the UFC. You know, we got guys coming back. Uh, Tim Elliott, mm-hmm. uh, they came back from Vegas. Julie Marquez is over here training with us. We have just – we have more and more people coming too that, that, you know, they never trained with us. It's just people are recognizing that we're doing something different and they're they're coming in, into the gym. And, man, the, the guys who have stayed here, you know, the Grant Dawson's, the Trey Ogden's, the guy who have mm-hmm. been here for, you know, six to ten years – we're, we're, we're seeing the benefits of us grinding the up downs every single day in and out. Well, you mentioned Julian Marquez. I, I, he just on Twitter last week talked about it. He's going to walk out to Miley Cyrus. Uh, what is the most unique walkout song that you've come to come out to? And um, what can you say about your walkout coming Halloween night? Any, anything up your sleeve, anything that I know it, it's a different kind of night, Halloween fight night. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of, you know, uh, when I got married, my mom and I danced to uh, as our mother son danced. But I danced to uh, Simple Man. Oh, nice! I walked, I walked out to that one time just for her. It was like it was her, I think I fought her on her birthday or something like that, and I walked out to that. I don't have a lot of unique walkout songs. Uh, I'm unlike Kevin Kroom, who has who has massive amounts of walkouts. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I for Halloween, you know, I thought about wearing just a Jason mask, just you know. A little bit because I'm Jason and it's Halloween. But yeah, I think I'm 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 not even worried about Halloween. I'm just going in focused and yeah, yeah. And job done. 
Well, you know, I think definitely back in the day, having a UFC on on a Halloween, you probably would have seen more maybe theatrics or costume just because, you know, everyone kind of had their own style outside of outside of uh, Reebok. But talk about just, you know, wearing those shorts. You know, I know you're a big sports fan. You played football. You're a Chiefs fan. Um, you know, talk about just wearing those shorts, which in a way is like the NFL of MMA. It is. Uh, it's fantastic. I, I got that first care package and I was so excited. I've been waiting for a, for a bag that says my name on it for so many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I still wear the shorts. I, I trained in them today. It's just, it, it's almost a little bit of validation to that says who you are, you know, what you've accomplished uh, wearing those in and out. You know, you get, you get the Reebok shoes that, that nobody else can buy or whatever you get only as a, as a fighter. And that's, that's pretty, it's pretty unique to have something that not a lot of people can do. Well, we just saw um, LFA uh, turn to Kansas, Wichita, Kansas. How's everything going there right now as far as the fight community? I know uh, Texas, here in Texas, they just had the commission say, we're going to bring back fights, you know, in small capacity and, yeah. you know, kind of here and there uh, from where your hometown, I mean, what's it looking like there right now with MMA and as far as events? Yeah, so uh, FAC, which is Joe Wooster, my manager, mm-hmm. and James Krause's show, um, we've had two of those fights since COVID. So we're mm-hmm. putting on shows. We're obviously you can't sell out arenas, but we're, yeah. we're you know we have a big arena that you can spread people out. So we have big shows that are uh, it's on UFC Fight Pass. I mean, we're still having we're still putting on shows. We're still having local fighters. I think we had twelve or thirteen Glory fighters. Uh, the veteran Jason High just fought mm-hmm. last weekend. I got, uh, I was, I got the corner of that. So it was, you know, it's, it's super unique. I think we're doing a lot of different stuff in different ways than most people are. Do you think it, uh, you know, with, even with just the limited amount of crowd, the, just that inner, having that energy again, being around that, that excitement, just kind of talk about that. And does it bring that kind of hope, that positive hope? Hey, we will, we'll get there. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, you know, walking out, just hearing people's cheer, just it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like you, you walk out the apex and all you hear is just you know reporters and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and Michael is being saying shit, and but it's funny. But you walk <laughs> out, you hear fans, you know, screaming. Uh, you hear in the back room, you know, somebody gets slammed. You hear the roar of the crowd, and it's it's a lot of fun. It, it definitely helps. It definitely amps it up a little bit. Um, it just yeah, it makes it makes everything seem a, a little bit better than you know sitting at home watching Netflix for the 400th time. The week. <laughs> well, talk about, well, going back to, you mentioned Michael Bisbing and commentary, you know, that's been an ongoing yeah. thing, how fighters can hear, not only hear their corners clearly, but they can also hear the commentators. Like just talk about kind of that experience. And, and do you like, I mean, obviously it's great to hear your corner, but you can also mm-hmm. hear their corner as well. Yeah, I, to be honest, I don't remember hearing anybody's corner. I remember hearing James Krause in my mm-hmm. corner, but uh, the announcers, I don't, I don't remember hearing any of that when I was in there. Um, hopefully it changes this time. Like, I'll be a little more a little more honed in and calmed down. You know, obviously my first UFC fight. I don't want to say you got UFC jitters, but, you know, it only lasted 48 seconds, so I can't remember a lot of what happened in the fight. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – as, as long as they're saying positive stuff, I'm happy about it. Unless you're talking shit, then I'm upset about it. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Like, if – you know, if you can hear him, that's that's cool. If you can't, I'm focused on on Krause's voice and my corner's voice. Uh, whoever's going to be there with me, I'm focused on what they're saying and, and the game plan ahead. What's the smallest crowd you've fought in uh, fought, fought in front of before? Ooh, man, I I fought in Arkansas and man, there was, there was <laughs> me and my buddy Trey Ogden. Uh, we drove down. It was seven hours. I was fighting. Uh, I can't even think of the kid's name now. Uh, it was <laughs> seven hour drive put it on map on Google maps or whatever. We pull in, it's a, it's a gravel parking lot with horse trailers and, and a horse like rodeo going on. And, we're like, <laughs> is it? and we walk in, there's a cage and they're like, this is the place. This is, this is it. <laughs> well, you know what? Like that's, it, it was probably 500 people and they were mm-hmm. all there too. So not, not a huge crowd. Um, but I've, I'd say I fought, yeah, probably 500 people is the least amount of people I fought under. I feel like that's the journey of, of a lot of fighters, especially mixed martial arts. There's always that one story of that one fight ground where maybe it was at like a carnival or a fair, or maybe their hotel stay was uh, not as 
appetizing or pleasing? Did you have any of those, those hotel stays for a fight that you're like, man, I can't, I can't wait to get to the big show. <laughs> uh, man, no, I didn't actually. No, no, no yeah. bad hotel. I think, I think moving forward, like as you know, all these kids coming up nowadays have FAC, which is in a freaking arena with mm -hmm. walks and, and, you know, great production of like UFC caliber almost. Yeah. Um, and then you talk to me, you talk to me, you talk to James Crouch, you talk to the people who fought in Wango, which was a country bar that was 50,000 square feet that you could still smoke in. Uh, yeah, it was just, it was just, it was just different. I mean, I never had any like bad experience. Uh, I did fight at a, a true memorial one time. I, I, I boxed for professional boxing. One of those a professional boxer, by mm -hmm. the way. <laughs> uh, I fought that guy. And I ended up making him quit in the third round. The whole, the whole town or the whole place was there for him. And they literally had to escort me out of the building because everybody oh, was so like, we had to get like, I'd have my car pulled around. I'd have, I'd have people come just like pick me up and like show for me out of the building because there was people waiting for me in the car. So that was oh, that was. Wow. That's kind of like you know you've been you know your UFC Walter just you know even when Colby beat RDA back in the day just all the tension there and even you know Chell Sonnen's had tension with with crowds so I couldn't imagine you know <laughs> you know yeah. having a had a having a run out um, during right. that yeah well your group is so is so tight knit what do you guys usually when it comes to fight day. Uh, what what is the kind of mood? Uh, do you guys kind of take it easy? Do you like to get a little warm up, or do you kind of like to just escape? Uh, it's super chill. Wake up in the morning. Um, we usually do a little bit of shakeout, probably like fifteen minutes, just hit mm -hmm. some, kind of get those lungs opened up a little bit. Because after you know, cut weight, you're feeling like shit. Uh, and it's always funny because you you <laughs> you're you're hitting mitts, and you're like, I feel so slow, and you can't be <laughs> out of shape. You're like, I gotta fight this guy, and I'm out of shape. But, you know, once you get that done, you feel, you feel great. Get that first sweat going. Then we usually just uh, grab some breakfast, um, hang out. We'll go – sometimes we'll go shopping. Just depends on what we can do. Like, now you can't really do much. But, yeah, we'll just hang out at the hotel, just watch movies. Nothing crazy. What do you, what do you usually – like, yeah, breakfast-wise, what do you like to – do you like to keep it light? I know you mentioned in an interview that uh, you got the call, the original UFC call, while you were eating Chipotle. Is that correct? It was. I, I worked <laughs> – my gym next to uh, Chipotle, and I was a huge bull at the time. What do you get on? What what what's your go to there? Are you a chicken guy? Or are you a steak guy? I'm a chicken guy, so I get mm -hmm. white rice, uh, no beans. I get the fajitas, double chicken, and cheese and lettuce. And that is it. Simple, healthy, delicious. <laughs> so for the fight day, do you like to get uh, kind of keep it light, or do you not really care? Do you like to take in more carbs? Uh, it depends on how I feel. I'll get a big breakfast, mm -hmm. big lunch, and like a snack, you know, before we go out. Go out and you're just gonna. I like to be a little bit hungry when I'm fighting. I don't want to be super full. I feel a little lethargic. Uh, but no, I'll make sure I get a big breakfast and then good lunch and then just some snacks throughout the day. Especially depending on when I'm fighting. Like, I imagine I'll be going out to the venue about one o'clock this time, so I'll probably be fighting about five or six. So. And do you yeah, guys so get nothing, to nothing crazy and then just say. Now, do you guys get to stick around at all and watch the? I know past events, or is it leave, come, go? Uh, I don't even think I changed last time. I think I was still in my fight shorts, mm -hmm. and they were heading back to the hotel. Oh wow! So, hoping, especially the Anderson Silva card, like I can just sneak by and be like, "Hey, I need to like do something." I don't know. I'll, I'll make up some excuse to watch the fight, but it'd just be cool to watch Anderson Silva fight live, quarantine what, or not. What do you think about that main event, him and Uriah Hall? It looks like it is. I mean, most likely Anderson Silva's last fight as far as reports out there goes. But, you know, with MMA, you never know. Um, right. Uh, I'd love to see Anderson Silva go out on top. Uh, I got, I'm leaning towards Hall. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I think he's just a little more athletic, a little more younger. Um, I think he comes away with the victory, but I'd love to see Anderson Silva come away his last fight on a win just because he's a legend and put so much to into the sport. Do you um, do you see it as kind of a pass in the torch? I mean, obviously we saw that with Izzy and him, but also uh, Hall and Silva are supposed to fight, I believe, back in 2016. And you know, at that time, and even still now, Hall is one of those you know devastating strikers um, that we all wanted to see this matchup. Do you kind of see that fight being like that again? Another passing of the torch. Um, kind of, but I think I think uh, Hall's been around a little bit. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. I think 
if there was a torch, it would have been a long time ago. I think that passing the torch goes to Izzy just because they have a more similar style. Mm-hmm. And Izzy just kind of that stardom personality, too. I don't think Uriah Hall has, has that as, as, as opposed to uh, – Anderson Silva did, you know. What I mean, they're they're mm-hmm. Izzy is more similar to Anderson Silva and Stardom and and uh, like fancy fancy fighting, you know. I know Uriah Hall has that that spinning back kick too, but it's just I don't think they're the same. Well, and you know, one thing that's interesting about this is just well, one, it's going to be five rounds, so that's going to be very intriguing right there do you do you see this ending in a stoppage or do you think it could go be a little bit more you know competitive back and forth and go the distance uh i i see it going all five rounds i just mm-hmm. think uh i think hall edge him out a little bit i don't see either one of them really finishing each other unless it's just some miraculous blow um they could be I, you know, you've seen Anderson Silva get stopped by Cannonier with his knees. You've seen him yeah. – or his leg kicks. You've seen uh, Anderson Silva break his knee. So, I mean, there's there's always the, the possibility that – the possibility that, you know, Uri Hall kick him a couple times and bust his knee up a little bit too. So, there's, there's possibilities of that. But other than that, I'd, I'd see just kind of going five rounds of just uh, kind of a chess game. Well, you mentioned that leg kick because one thing I'm thinking about Anderson Silva too, and you can never count out the spider. Um, he's so crafty, you know, veteran, obviously. But that leg injury, you know, even going back to a year ago with Cannoneer, and it didn't look like it took much for that leg to give out. Obviously, Cannoneer is explosive and powerful. I mean, that is something obviously a red flag right there. You know, we saw that nasty leg break in 23 uh, 2013. Really, in that Nick Diaz fight, you. Didn't see him explode as much. Bisbing probably was the last fight where you, you saw the vented spider jumping knee, but doesn't throw a lot of that high volume kicks. Uh, could that be a possible sign of concern? Maybe, you know, that, that leg kick or that leg. Uh, it could be. I mean, it, it definitely has to, to play a factor into it as, as many times as it happened. You know I mean, and Cannon is a coming down from heavyweight. That dude, mm-hmm. it's a that fucking powerhouse. <laughs> so, Imagine he kicks a little bit harder than, than Uriah Hall does, but at the same time, especially 195, doesn't take much. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It doesn't take much, and, and, and Silva's not a young cat anymore. He's, he's getting up there in age. He's put a lot of miles on those, on those legs. So it, it might not take much. Well, I want to pick your brain some more about you, – you mentioned Cannoneer. Uh, Robert Whitaker – uh, this coming weekend, I mean, that's such an exciting fight. I really don't know who to really pick, but I hope it's only three rounds. I really think it would be great if it was a five-round uh, fight, just because anything can happen. Um, but if you kind of had to side, or uh, who, who would, who do you really like in this? Um, like I said, for me, it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. Um... You know, looking back, I've, so since they had the whole like countdown and the fights been announced, I've watched quite a few of you know both their fights. Um, I, I have I have Cannonier edging it out. I think mm-hmm. he just has power, and I think he's. I also like to see him fight Izzy. I think that'd be a fun fight to watch. Some something new. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he just has too much power. I think he's gonna be taken down a couple times. I think if the fight was, you know, five rounds, I would edge it out a little more towards uh, Whitaker mm-hmm. just because. And conditioning would play a bigger factor in that. His conditioning is a lot better. Uh, not a lot better, but, you know, he's, I think he edges the conditioning. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think, I think he's just, I think he's, he just hits too hard. And I think he's, I think he's going to just uh, play it out. I think he'll, I think he'll TKO Whitaker. You think it'll be maybe second round, third round? I'm like, if any first round, I mean, first round. be like third round. I think it'll be somewhere around there. I think, I think he's probably him soon in the first round. Well, you know, the thing with uh, Whitaker, obviously always dangerous, but it can be a slow start even in that Darren Till fight. I think Till, of course, won that first round, even even dropped him. So with it being shorter, you know, only three rounds, that will be very intriguing to see how he can weather Cannoneer's storm because Cannoneer's right. pressure, and like you said, he's strong, he's powerful, he's explosive. Can he weather that and you only have two more rounds? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think he will. You know, it's it's going to be a good fight no matter what. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're both explosive, powerful dudes. Um, I, I had a chance to watch Whitaker fight Jacques Rastosa in Kansas City. Oh wow! Um, oh, that was a that was a great one. <laughs> fight. I want a dollar off that, by the way. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's I think it's one of the also one of one of the fights that'll uh, the fans are going to win. It's it's going to be you know it's just 
somebody's going down. Well, a dollar is all I will ever bet. <laughs> I've seen some crazy bets, you know, when it kind of, what was it Amanda Nunez, Felicia Spencer? What was it like half a million or million dollar bet? I can't remember, but I was like, oh my, this is obviously, you know, you've been in sport a long time, you know, anything can happen. That's a, that's crazy. <laughs> Don't talk to James Crossland. He'll, he'll talk you into betting one a dollar. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a dollar is about as far as I go right now. I am not – I have the worst luck when it comes to – when I go to Vegas, it's sad. So <laughs> – I got good luck when I go to Vegas. Well, there you go. Well, and, and there you go. And you're, you'll be right back there on the 31st. So maybe do a little bit of betting. I mean, how is, how is it there? I haven't, I haven't been since March. Like, what's kind of the vibe right now with everything going on? And I, oh, you didn't really get a chance to – experience there's stuck in the hotel for yeah <laughs> but city's like i'd like to stay a little bit longer but i can so yeah well that main event this saturday it that's another one that you know is, is so exciting excited we're here between habib and justin gaishi you know we talked about leg kicks um yeah. you know justin uh is notorious for throwing some dangerous leg kicks uh what do you what can you see be in the narrative of this fight for both guys yeah, man, Justin plays a, 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 a dangerous uh, – he's definitely a dangerous fighter. He's definitely the most dangerous fighter that could be will face in terms of mm-hmm. skill set. Um, he has those leg kicks. He does, but I don't, I don't see Khabib, Khabib – like if you watch Khabib fight Connor, he doesn't stand in front of him. He, he makes mm-hmm. you chase him. Mm-hmm. Um, his stand-up's not great. It's not super technical, but it, mm-hmm. it, it does what it needs to do. It's, it's, he's setting up his striking to set up his takedowns. That's what he's looking for. And I, I think Gaethje win – couple leg kicks but nothing to put him away you know i mean i think i think Khabib moves too much to be chopped down with leg kicks and obviously they're they're gonna be prepared for that too so um i i unfortunately i think i'd I'd like i don't want to say that i'd like to see Khabib lose because he's man's a savage and he's earned what he has Mm -hmm. but i'd like to see gage come out on top just because it'd be cool but if 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 i'm a betting man we're going back to the betting tables Mm -hmm. again betting on Khabib because the dude's i mean he's he's one of the he's He's probably the, the goat. If you if you know he wins this fight, especially he's probably the goat. So you can't really bet against that man. Well, and it, it, it's it's interesting also because um, we even saw with you know Ally Quinta fight, and even the Connor fight. I mean, he, he doesn't lose his steam even as it goes on to the. That was going to be the question: How does is he going to lose his steam in the fourth and fifth? But even with Geishi and that Tony Ferguson, that was a question too. You know, usually Tony's the guy that cardio that keeps going and keeps going, but Geishi never let up but he also he, he took his time and he talked about that and how him and trevor went and took his time there was no anxious movement or that and he still had that that power even going into that fifth so it'll be interesting to see you know which justin gaishi in that and and if he's gonna still be that calculated and that that cardio to the end because i mean he's still dangerous with those leg kicks but once again this is habib and i mean we talked about puzzle pieces he's the master you know has so far been the master puzzle solver but it is so i don't know what's gonna happen i really don't i i'm i'm really not a, a big like picking fights just because especially when the styles are so close but you know obviously wrestling grappling Habib, but I mean, this is Justin, former All American as well, and he's got great takedown. If it's, I kind of look at him as like the Chuck, the newer Chuck Liddell of the lightweight division, you know, in a way, in a way. But it's, it's Khabib's not that traditional American. Wrestling. Yeah, it's it's that Sambo just grind you out. Like uh, I don't ever watch Grant Dawson fight. Like that kid has mm-hmm. very even he will. It's it's just different. It's it's smothering you. It's not. It's efficient too. It's not. It's not the like I'm chain wrestling where I'm just exhausted. It's I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna chain mm-hmm. wrestle here, and I'm comfortable. I'm breathing. I'm having a normal conversation with you over here while I'm whooping this guy's ass. So, so I think Khabib can stay efficient that entire time. Do I think Gates should get up? I, I do absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, Khabib has the most takedowns in a single fight, like mm-hmm. against Trujillo. But how many times get, did he get up? That's the other thing too. Like mm-hmm. if you have 27 takedowns, he also got up 27 times. So. If Gagey can, you know, keep keep from getting pinned down to the ground and keep those legs from getting wrapped in the wrist wrap, then he'll have a great chance. Um, it's just hard to do. It's just hard to solve that puzzle. I mean, his I mean, his back control is a thing of beauty. It, it really is. Like I always say, like with Damon Maya, it's just a masterpiece artwork, and he's so patient. You know, he never. It looks like he he never loses steam. He's he's just so he's so in control. He's in the driver's seat. And I mean that's going to be very intriguing too if he if he if he gets 
um, Justin's back, um, how, how Justin's going to, you know, reverse that fight out of that. Cause it just seems like whenever he gets that position, I mean, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. You saw that even with Dustin Poirier, you know, and Dustin's a very solid grappler and he just makes really good grapplers look, you know, n- not yeah, right there. Especially fourth or fifth round. I mean, you're exhausted no matter what bloods are under your arms. You're tired. It, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, he's just, I, I think him being such I think Walt Harris said it like there's nothing I've been to he's like I've been to Dagestan like there's nothing that's going to tear mm-hmm. by when he's in the cage he's emotionless so he has mm-hmm. no you know what I mean sometimes you can get against the cage and like kind of hide yourself up a little bit I gotta get here gotta get here I think he's just so emotionless and so focused on what to do that it's like you're not you're not gonna there's nothing you're gonna bring to the table that he's like oh well I came out of nowhere yeah well they, I don't did you just see the the animated promo video they posted it it It'll bring a tear to your eye if you haven't seen it because it shows him and his father's relationship and it's an animated video and it's him, his journey getting all the way up to the UFC and becoming champion and his father. Very, you know, very, definitely very emotional, um, you know, video, but, you know, it just shows, you know, this journey that Khabib has been on and just the, even now going through this adversity that he's gone with the loss of his father. But, you know, he, in every interview that he's done so far, just very calm, very positive, too. I think that helps too. I mean, just very strong mental state. I think he respected his father so much mm-hmm. that if let's if his father was still alive and he was he was naked and being down, his father would beat the shit out of him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I think he his father so much that he's just saying, Hey, you know, what would my father want to do? How would I act if my father was still here? And that's kind of honoring his dad. So I think that's that's pretty cool to to kind of put that in perspective for him. Well, Going back to Kansas City, I know you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, correct? Yep. So tonight, now this will be posted right after, but tonight they they do take on the Buffalo Bills. I mean, what do you think about that matchup in the season so far? Yeah, um, Super Bowl champs, man. You can't you can't get past that Super Bowl champs. We're well, we've only lost we lost last week, so it's that sucks. But uh, yeah, I just you know it's I'm not like a huge like sports fan. I don't like watching football or baseball that much but i love the fact that a whole you know especially with all the rioting and all the all the shit going on without the united states i loved seeing the fact that an entire city mm-hmm. can come there and be kind of uh just happy together about mm-hmm. a football yeah but so it's 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 pretty cool to watch the whole city i think you know with patrick mahomes it's just a, it's a different game and the kid's so good and they give him so much money i mean that kid's that kid's balling in money so it's uh it's pretty cool to see Mahomes magic, Mahomes magic, and and now you have Le'Veon Bell um, in the mix in the offensive mix. I mean, what do you think about that? Uh, like I said, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't even know that. So they should, they should bring that one up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, very short as of end of last week. Yeah, he he's now joining joining the crew. I mean, it's interesting, you know. It's interesting things didn't work out with the you know New Jersey, but you know right there there's a there's a whole lot of issues. But you know that's another weapon you know for Mahomes, and I mean even defensively the way you guys look, I mean so strong. I I'm not to jinx anything, but I I think they're the team to still beat in the league. You know looking at both NFC and you know AFC, I think they're still the strong one loss. That's just a little. I mean it, it's happening yeah. everywhere this season. No nobody looks fully invincible and I think you know you're seeing the injuries a lot around the league but they still look the most sharp in my opinion well I also think it's the same thing as as uh as glory it's like yeah who's during quarantine who was in the gym who mm-hmm. was who was working um that's who's gonna you know come out on top and you're gonna see that play out well if I had to make predict I'm still going even though Packers lost the other night I'm looking at Chiefs Packers or, or Chiefs Seahawks I would love to see a Super Bowl one redone before between the chiefs and and the pack i think that would be kind of cool just that history but the seahawks but i mean you got tom brady you know who's still 43 years old still pushing still working hard look sharp yesterday yeah uh who <laughs> i think it was uh, joe rogan who said something he's like i can't remember it might have been his stand-up i can't remember exactly what it was he's like he's like oh i get paid eight million dollars to uh to play football to play a game yeah i'm gonna do that He's like, oh, I'm on second string and I still get paid six hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Like, like if I'm forty three years old and I'm Tom Brady, I'm actually I don't know, man. He's he's probably has a money. <laughs> I'd probably be sitting on a beach somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. 
Well, you know, you even see it in, you know, MMA too for a long time. I mean, um, you mentioned, you know, we mentioned Damian Maya still going. I mean, Dan Henderson went for a long, Randy Couture, you know, for a long time. I, I think it's that if you feel like you still have something in the tank and, you know, luckily with Brady, he, other than that leg injury, I think it was back 08, he really hasn't had as many like injuries that where he had to sit out a full season. So, you know, he still has that, like, I, I still got this. I mean, he's on a two year deal, you know, we'll see what happens after next year but he still still feels like he has it and Gronk's back too and after a year you know cop touchdown yesterday so they have that well-oiled machine even if it's not in the Patriots uniform well a lot of those guys have taken care of themselves you know Randy Couture mm-hmm. you know took care of himself throughout the year it gave him the ability to to fight well into his 40s yeah, and I think that's Sorry a big that. no, no. That's okay. Uh, no, that, I think that's the key, and I think that's the key, obviously, with with most sports and most competition, is how well you you know take care of your body and fuel your body. How much downtime do you like to give yourself in between fights? Do you give a lot, or are you right back in the gym? Depending, if yeah, you depending, come out no injuries. Depending on the fight, you know, last fight uh, I was back in the gym Monday. Oh, awesome! Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm not going to go spar five rounds, ten rounds, or whatever that day, but oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be back in the gym, drilling, training. I'm um, just back in the environment of, uh, you know, being in glory. And that's, mm. that's one of the funnest parts. Um, yeah. I don't like to take a lot of time off, especially, especially after I lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, I want to be back in the gym working. Um, even, you know, I'm actually taking a week off after this because I get to go to Florida after, after the fight. So I'll be in Florida for a week. So I'll take a week off this time, but that's, that's about the extent of what I want to be off for. What part of Florida? Uh, West Palm Beach. Oh, nice. Nice. And fl- Florida's so all right. Yeah, so about 45 minutes. And are you just going, uh, going out to the beach, or do you have family there? Uh, so my wife's parents own a condo down there, oh. and me and her and a buddy of mine and his wife are going down there just for a week just to kind of uh, – it's actually my birthday too, so – Oh, just ha- happy early back. birthday. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. So we're just kind of going down there to hang out and relax a little bit, get away. My wife and I were supposed to go to Greece in uh, June, and that got canceled because of quarantine. So she's like itching to go somewhere. So I'm like, we'll get a little bit out of the way. Nothing too crazy. Well, and and this is a really, you know, this time of year too in Florida because – you know, summer, obviously it's busy. I always say, cause my grandparents lived in Florida. So, uh, in the summertime, you have that moment where 10 minutes, 30 minutes, it rains for 30 minutes. And then you're like, Oh, we can't go to the beach. And then you just wait 10 minutes, rain goes away and then you can go to the beach. So yeah. that summer of Florida was, so right now I, I'm sure it's pretty nice and, and cool and chill. Yeah. I don't know. I'll check the weather. I know, uh, her parents are down there right now. So I'll call them and be like, Hey, how's it looking? Do you like to uh, sightsee? Do you like to go to restaurants? Or are you kind of very low key? Uh, I'm a excursions type person. Like I cannot go to, I, I can't go and sit by a pool. Mm-hmm. I can't go sit on a beach. Like I have to do something. I have to ride four wheelers. I have to surf. I have to snorkel. I have to, you know, go do something. There has to be something that sparks my interest or I don't drink too often. I will if I'm on vacation, mm-hmm. but I can't sit by a pool and drink. I'll lose my freaking mind. <laughs> so, uh, Oh, it's gone. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, the, the connection's cutting out for a second. Go, go ahead. You're good. I just like to go out and do stuff. So I got, I got to be active. Well, no, that I mean that's always good. I, I'm kind of in the same, but it's hard. I pace, you know, like I have to be doing something. I can't just sit, you know. Even during, you know, quarantine, like I, I try to binge watch as much, but I'm just like, oh man, I, I got to get outside. And this is before even gyms or anything were open. I'm like. I got to do something. I got to go run <laughs> or something. Luckily yeah. have podcasting, something creative, some, some kind of outlet to keep the mind going. So what are some things outside of MMA that you just, Hey, when you get that moment to break free, you said four wheelers and that. So when it, you're not at the gym, you get that day off. What, what, what is Jason Witt doing? Yeah. Before quarantine, my wife and I always love to go to the movies. Like we just have a sweatpants Sunday, just throw on sweatpants, go to a movie, something like that. Um, Right now, so I was fortunate enough, my, my father, when I was 18 years old, bought a Z28 Camaro. Oh, wow. uh, rebuilt the whole thing, uh, bigger engine, bigger transmission, yada, yada. It sounds like a freaking, it's a drag car pretty much, right? Uh, for Father's Day, he gave that to me. 
Um, so I was very fortunate for that. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to drive. So I'm just jumping in that. I put, I put wheels on it and put a hood on it. So it looks, it looks pretty cool. I'm just driving around in that, just having fun with that right now. Well, you mentioned going to the movies, uh, you know, obviously movies are right now, theaters are closed, but what have you mentioned at the beginning, you Netflix and binging anything, any movies you've watched lately? Uh, not really. Nothing, there's nothing new out. And I keep, <laughs> I, I movies so often I'm like this, I'm, I'm, I should stop watching so many movies because this is way too much. Um, no, I, my wife makes fun because I watch stupid movies. Like last night, I watched Hubie Halloween. Oh, I watched you. Yeah, what? what you, <laughs> it, it's, I, a little, it's fun. <laughs> I'm an fan. Yeah, I just hate. I don't care. It's entertaining. It cracks me up. He's funny, so I don't care what they say. I, 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 it entertains me. That's all that matters. Well, you'll never look look at a thermos the same way, and not in a bad way. But I mean, the fact oh. that he made it like a Swiss Army. And then, <laughs> I mean, some of those movies you just have to go into and like look. Is this going to win an Oscar? No. <laughs> you know, this is just a fun escape on a, what, Friday night, Sunday night, whatever, just to sit back and chill. Sunday, I'm tired. I don't have anything else to do. I just want to watch a movie and just kind of drift off a little bit before I go to bed. And that, that's what it does. It entertains me. Did you ever see Extraction with Chris Hemsworth on Netflix? I did, yeah. yeah it was a good I, movie, I, thought. I thought that was a good one to release during quarantine. Like, I, or just in general, like, I thought Netflix has done a really good job with a lot of their original films. Yeah, they have. They've come up with a lot of a lot of good stuff. Um, when a lot of people haven't, like I have Hulu and Netflix, and Hulu used to be my go-to because I had so many movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. But now that now I'm leaning a little more toward Netflix because they're just kind of putting out more content. Well, then there was that uh, Project Power, Jamie Fox. I don't know if you saw that. I thought it was great. I loved it. I, I I thought it was. I mean, I thought it was unique. I mean, usually it was definitely different from us. It's not really a superhero film, but the whole superpower. Uh, genre like it was different kind of like limitless a little bit just because the whole pill thing but i thought it was a great it was a it was a great concept if you had a superpower what would it be teleportation same here (laughs) teleportation i'm in just hey i don't i don't feel like being here today it's cold i'm out see ya well and you could go to greece quicker you don't have to worry you know you don't have to worry about flying you know i could go i wouldn't even get the corona (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you just go anywhere. I mean, well, here in Dallas, traffic is so horrible. Like that would be make a lot of people less stressed <laughs> in the Dallas. Uh, uh, one final thing too, you know, being from the Kansas City area, I've mentioned Texas. I've always heard about Kansas City barbecue. So if I ever venture to your area, what's a place that you said, Charlie, go check out this barbecue joint? Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. But mm-hmm. if if that I always say Jack Stack. Um, mm-hmm. That's just my go to. That's where I like to go. Um, you have, you have, everybody has their own opinion. So it's like you have uh, Q39, you have Oklahoma Joe's, and you can't go wrong with either one. They all have their own little unique thing that makes them, makes them better. You know what I mean? But for me, Jack Stack's my place to go. It's all about, it's always all about to the, not just the cut of meat, but the sauce. I mean, I haven't had Kansas City barbecue, you know, I, even though I'm, I live in Texas, I love Memphis barbecue because the sauce, the sauce is always good. So do you like, what kind of style sauce do you usually like? I'm not a spicy fan, so I'm mm-hmm. always the sweeter, mm-hmm. uh, more tasting on anything. Like I don't like spicy food at all in general. So mm-hmm. anything that's just more sweet, savory is better for me. So you would not be on the YouTube show Hot Ones? No, I'm out. No, <laughs> I mean, my wife makes me wife make watch because I, I can't do it. Like, you put sriracha on shit and I'm out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. It's just it's not enjoyable for me. Well, uh, you know, speaking of the Kansas City guy, Paul Rudd was on there. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he did push through those wings. I feel like right when they get to, like, ring, ring, wing four or five, it's just like, I thought I got this. <laughs> feels like you're torturing yourself like what <laughs> like i don't even, i don't even like buffalo like i just mm. buffalo wings nope i'm out it just it doesn't even taste good to me there's no flavor to it it's just it's murder in my mouth for no reason so more of maybe sweet honey barbecue yep i'm in let's go well all right jason i want to thank you again for taking your time best of luck with your fight next saturday night uh where can people find you uh instagram under the underscore vanilla gorilla uh, Facebook's just Jason Witt, um, anywhere, anywhere on social media, pretty much it's pretty easy to find me. 
Well, thank you again, man. You have a good rest of your week, and uh, we will see you back in action on October 31st. Thanks, man. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.